Guys, welcome to Muscle Memory. My name is Malcolm, and today I'm talking to a virtuosa, which according to Dictionary.com is a woman who's exceptionally talented and skilled, especially in music, but also sets in parentheses at winning knockout championships. She's facing <laughs> Trinity. <laughs> She's facing Trinity at Impact Emergence in a rematch for the title on August 27th in a Rebel Entertainment Center in Toronto. You can watch on Impact Plus, Fight TV, Impact Ultimate Insiders. It's Deanna Prazo. How are you? I loved that intro and Thanks. I was going to make a smart remark and then you made it about me. So I was like, Ooh, uh, uh. <laughs> of course, I mean, it's back to school season. So I had to get the Quizlet ready. Got to get the definitions out. So it I thought it was a dictionary. Time. It's a word. Yeah, it's a real word. It's a real <laughs> word. But I mean, going into like this big match coming up very soon, um, you're going after your fourth knockout championship. You told Trini that no one can beat the virtuoso twice. How do you make sure that she actually doesn't defeat you once again at emergence? You know what? I think the um, being a, the virtuosa at my core means I'm an ultimate strategist, right? So I have to go back. I have to watch Slammiversary. I have to pick it apart. How did we end up in that submission? And how do I not let that happen again? Um, I think for me, it's just gameplay. And it's it's studying and watching and, and going back and learning from my mistakes and making sure that in the ring, I'm prepared for that situation again. And I know how to get myself out of that situation. For sure. I mean, I, I think you definitely might get the title back. I don't know. I, if I was a betting man, I'm putting money on you. I think you might get it back. <laughs> but you've had a few stints at Impact Wrestling and TNA back in the day from 2014 and 2017. How much have you changed as a performer now in 2023 with Impact Wrestling? How do you see like the company growing as well from back in that 2014 day up till now? Oh, my gosh. I have changed. It's like night and day. Um, I did my first knockouts knockdown in 2014, and I didn't have gear. Um, I ran, first of all, that was like not supposed to happen. It was such a last minute thing. So I, that was my eighth professional wrestling match ever in front of an audience. Wow. So I didn't have like custom made gear. I think I, I didn't even have like wrestling boots. Then my trainer gave me a pair of red and white kick pads that would match the red top I bought to wear. Um, I went to my best friend's mom's house to put extensions in my hair. Cause I had like really short hair at the time. Um, I, and I was shy. I was deathly afraid of like talking in front of people. And um, I just wanted to wrestle. I didn't know how to be a character or be anything else yet. And um, when Christy Hemi saw that I was genuinely this like really shy introvert person, she was like, just be that times 10, like go out there and be shy. And like, we can play off that. At least it's something, um, you know, and then fast forward, I did knockouts knockdown again in 2016. And I kept in touch with like Gail and obviously Madison Rain is one of my best friends. And, um, you know, Gail's critique was always like, you're a great wrestler, but we need something like there's you're just a wrestler. We need character traits. We need something we can like tell stories with. We could do a vignette with. And I just didn't have that yet. Um, so fast forward, you know, a couple of years later to I get released and, um, you know, Madison put me in touch with with Scott Demore. And I had all of that because the work that I was so uh, defiant against in NXT. And I was like, I am, you know, I have all these things and I gave them, um, you know, a character synopsis and, and vignette ideas and promo ideas. I was able to just give that to Scott because I hadn't used them on t television at that point and uh, be like, this is exactly who I think I am. If you like this, let's roll with it. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, you know, I didn't know if wrestling was for me anymore. So it was just kind of experimental at that point of, will this work? Will it not work? And um, we have a really great creative team at Impact who just understands the virtuosa at her core. I would say Robert Evans is a virtuoso himself. Um, and he just like got exactly what I was was trying to vibe with. And here we are. So my growth has been from this like shy eighth match, doesn't know what she's in for girl to a full grown woman who knows what she wants and what she's worth, has main evented pay-per-views. I go out to the ring now and I'm like, I'm the greatest and I have no worries. Everything is within my control. Being in a wrestling ring is the happiest place in the world for me, the safest place in the world for me, um, as opposed to that girl who who didn't know anything. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely working out for you. I feel like you're carving out like a Hall of Fame career. I mean, there's no doubt you will be putting that Hall of Fame one day. And I'm um, coming up soon in uh, October, I believe, would be Bound for Glory and obviously Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame as well. Uh, in your mind, who do you think could be uh, inducted this year into the Impact Hall of Fame? Ooh, um, a few people came to mind at first. I think um, Tara would be an amazing option. Oh, yeah. um, 
we saw her come back to impact and have a couple matches and I just, I love Lisa. And I think what she's done and, and she was so ahead of her time and I don't necessarily know that she gets all the credit for it. So I would love to see her inducted into the hall of fame. I think Mickey is always going to be a contender. Um, you know, she's kind of still on her hiatus from impact right now. We don't know what's happening, but um, if she decided to maybe step away from in ring competition and do something else, I feel like she would definitely be the next woman to be inducted for sure yeah definitely solid answer solid answer and a lot of people call you like i think you call yourself before a career killer before and like <laughs> there's a big show coming up uh called impact 1000 i'm sure you already know what that is of course yeah. legends are coming back to the company it's gonna be a, a grand show and you've beaten so many legends before with jazz mickey melina odb etc when it comes to impact 1000 if the opportunity is on the table for you to face a former knockout uh who who could that be gail kim that's a good answer <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need to think about that. It's Gail Kim. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I feel like I know why, but like, why Gail Kim? Um, I've been asked this question a lot recently, honestly, and and I think my answer is always the same. Of of Gail created the Stockouts division, and I think in the back of my mind and like in my heart, I want to always do right by Gail because this is her baby. And if she's proud of it, if she's proud of the work I do, um, then I can be proud of myself. And and I think that's a large part of the camaraderie in our entire locker room is like we have the leader here we have the og the greatest the the creator um we have to put in the work for her because she's seeing it like manifest right in front of her eyes and uh on top of that that wanting to work for gail i think that there's a lot of similarities throughout our career i think we both carved our place in rest women's wrestling history in impact wrestling um and i just think it's like she's the greatest the greatest she's the og but i'm the greatest of today and what kind of interaction would that be we've had a couple interactions before and it's kind of me always being a <laughs> to gail um so i just think it would be interesting to see to see what that 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 story would be and what the outcome would be i think the outcome is definitely winning for sure i mean <laughs> you know, give yourself some credit um i mean honestly yeah i mean gail's definitely been one of the big faces or like pillars of tna impact wrestling i feel like you definitely have uh, maybe not taking her spot, but like definitely have like that same kind of status in a knockout division. And I guess like the last thing I wanted to, uh, to mention or ask you about is like your ring gear. I, mean, I feel like your ring gear is probably some of the best in impact wrestling, probably in just like the whole scheme of pro wrestling right now. Where do you get like the, the inspiration for like these ropes? Cause they're always so like big and magical. How much do they cost? They look expensive. <laughs> like it looks crazy. Um, okay. So obviously they've evolved over time and a lot of my jackets from like when I first debuted Impact through kind of just rebellion in April, um, were like gothic and and like very um like old Renaissance, you know, old century kind of feels to them. Um, and honestly, I found a, find a lot of things on Etsy where I don't necessarily have to have someone make them because they when I have had custom ones, they take forever to make. So I got a lot of inspiration from like um the Victorian era or the Elizabethan era with that just like mo like that m a gothic architecture. Um, and for whatever reason, like I feel I was born, like my alter ego was like a 20s flapper. So when I put on, like I've been a flapper for Halloween, like when I put on a headdress and a feather, I feel like this is who I am. Um, so for Rebellion, I was like, I really wanna be like a 20s. Like I found this really beautiful shawl that I wore. Um, and uh, I was like, I'm going to get the headpiece. I'm going to embrace. We are in the modern era of the virtuosa of the 20s. And um, I've just kind of rolled with it. I find a lot of them on Etsy um, through through a shop that is just kind of like a vintage shop. And uh, honestly, I love it. Like the the things that I've been wearing lately are some of, some of my favorite pieces. So amazing amazing diana uh good luck you don't you don't need it actually but <laughs> congratulations on your future uh fourth knockouts championship win coming at impact emergence where can i follow you on social media if they're not already following you everyone can follow me at diana perrazzo on twitter and instagram i'm verified on both so don't let someone trick you <laughs> there you go there you go guys impact emergence gonna be on uh august 27 you can watch it i'll leave all the links down below so you can figure it out yourself and we're out Just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, we going up like a thousand. I'm a flesh just like a muscle man Malcolm. Uh, when it just like one, two, three. If you
like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze. If you like the channel, this will squeeze.